hope that at this time, Karin, the vacuum tube witch. And we're going on with the Commodore 64 power supply project. I made the board. Time to install it in the enclosure, connect it and test it. <laughs> but first, and yeah, this is Coco. Coco? <laughs> this is Coco. And uh, first, uh, let's take a look at the datasheet of that uh, voltage regulator module. Because um, that's uh, pretty interesting. So here we've got uh, the Recom uh, R-78K-5.0 uh, uh, um, voltage uh, regulator. And that's uh, this one exactly, 5.0-2.0, 5 volts, 2 amperes. It can accept uh, any input voltage from uh, 6.5 to 36 volts. Outputs uh, 5 volts at uh, 2000 milliamp, 2 amps. The efficiency is very high from uh, 78 to, to 85, depending on the input voltage. Uh, the more input voltage we have, uh, the less efficiency for, for the regulator. Got some data and graphs, basic characteristics, uh, input uh, under voltage lockout, uh, UV allow um, for the 78 uh, that's uh, 9,9 9,7 9, I, I don't uh, I don't exactly know uh, what the UV allow is um, don't remember I think I um, learned it some uh, at some point from a V blog but uh, I don't uh, remember now. Uh, the slew rate, uh, quiescent current, uh, that's uh, how much uh, current this uh, voltage regulator is gonna take uh, for its own needs. 1 milliamp, uh, that's very efficient. I think that uh, 7805 um, could uh, take uh, more current, I'm not so sure now. Internal operating frequency 400 kilohertz. That's a lot, and uh, any any high frequency noise uh, can be easily clamped uh, with a uh, some uh, some tens of nanofarad uh, filter cap. Minimum load zero percent, so. Um, there's no fear that um, this regulator is gonna fail um, or work um, incorrectly if we don't load it. It's gonna be fine. Output ripple and noise For for others, uh, 100 uh, millivolts peak to peak, uh, up to 120. Not too shabby, I would say. And those uh, those graphs um, are for 1.2 to 3.3 volts uh, regulators. Um, we only need to care about the. 5 volts uh, regulator and this is the this is um, the the rating graph uh, for given uh, input voltages uh, how uh, 
how uh, far we can load the regulator based on the ambient temperature. And uh, this is gonna be somewhere between the, the gray line and the red line, uh, between 9 and uh, 24 volts, so, because um, the rectified uh, voltage uh, is gonna be around uh, 13, uh, 12 to 13 volts uh, on the input of the regulator. So this is gonna be close to the, uh, the gray line. And we can uh, see that uh, the regulator could go up to 80 degrees Celsius so without uh, having to work uh, with, uh, with lower current. So we can uh, push it pretty far. This is the... ESD safety info and regulatory compliance info. ESD, not, not ESD, but EMC, electromagnetic uh, compliance uh, compatibility. And uh, filtering for, for the class A and class B EN uh, 55032. For this little prototype, I don't really have to care about that, uh, so I won't be adding any pi filters uh, on the input. And then we've got some um, mechanical information about this um, voltage regulator module with some drawings and packaging information, and that would be it for the data sheet. So, that was about that pesky little bugger called switch mode uh, voltage regulator and now let's get over to the bench and put the thing back together. So, back to the schematic that has some additional information on it uh, that I um, added about the pinout of the connectors on the, on the board and also the pinout of um, the DIN connector for the Commodore. Let's, let's zoom on in. So uh, let's take a closer look at uh, the board itself. Of course, the full bridge rectifier, the filter cap, the voltage regulator with the diode that I didn't insert uh, the last time. A capacitor on the output. I didn't uh, install the 100 nanofarad capacitor. I might do it, uh, but I'm not that very sure if where I could put it. Hmm. Yeah. So I guess that I'll just stick with um, this uh, electrolytic and rely on the filter caps in the Commodore to do the high frequency filtering. On the primary side, we've got the fuse. I made an uh, insulation gap between the high voltage and low voltage parts by uh, cutting out the, the soldering fields. I also added some uh, captain tape just to be sure. So now, now I might trim those uh, those wires. Trim those wires and uh, strip them and put some uh, solder on them. Okay. 
Got this nice Yokari wire stripper. Made in Germany. None of the Chinese rubbish. I almost forgot about the fume extractor. First, I think I would like to just uh, connect the primary and secondary and measure the voltage. And this I will also want to cut down a bit. The cable doesn't look all that nice. Shouldn't be a problem with a low power draw like we have here. I'd really like to preserve, preserve the original cable. I guess I'll just use the ferrules. I have the Knipex uh, scissors that have the little dimple for uh, pressing the ferrules two or three presses are enough uh, for this little ferrule and that's how uh, you should uh, finish the the ends of um, stranded cable if you want to use it on uh, screw terminals and here we've got uh, one pair of um, the screw terminals uh, for the input and the other one for the output to the transformer winding I make this uh, for the winding. And that would be the primary sign. Uh, 
and let's try the secondary. Here I've got um, the 9 volt uh, AC on those four terminals. And that would go to the black winding. And the next two screw terminals would go to the other 9 volt AC that uh, powers the power supply. And the moment of truth is coming. I'm plugging this into the device under test uh, socket uh, on my bench, powering up, fire to the wire. And here I had the ground. Here I had plus 5 volts DC, but it doesn't seem to be working. I wonder why. Did I get something wrong here? Half a volt? Why? What's going on? Input power, input power is on, it goes to the transformer, the transformer worked last time but now it doesn't seem to. Did it get damaged? Three and a half volt. Hmm, that's very interesting. Unplugged. Let's test if we have continuity on the primary side. Two arms should be okay. Secondary side, no continuity. Why? Or maybe I just got something jumbled with those wires 0.7 ohms oh damn it <laughs> looks like i just uh, connected um, those uh, extension wires uh, in such a way that it's uh, red to black and black black to red and let's check the other one look at this <laughs> So, I guess it's gonna be a success after all. So, now let's connect this to the full bird rectifier. Yeah, you always gotta prepare for the unforeseen consequences. And 
resuming the testing procedure. Five point zero twenty six volts. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Let's check the AC voltage on the other winding. Eight point seventy volts because the unit is powered through a light bulb. I guess that's um, a bit lower than normally. Let's put the full mains voltage on the unit. 8.65 uh, Still, I guess it's good enough. Depowered. So, let's carry on putting this thing back together. The Commodore 64 power cable. Let's take a look at the pinout of the DIN connector on this thing. Like we see here, this is the power connector. Those uh, two contacts would be connected with the black wires. This is the 9 volts uh, AC power. Those three connectors, uh, number 1, 2 and 3, they are the ground on the blue wire. And the two connectors here, 4 and 5, they are the plus uh, 5 volts DC on the brown wire. And again, let's strip this. Also, another good side. This I will also cut down and make a new one. Those leads are thinner than uh, the other ones. So I can use those half a square millimeter ferrules for this. I can try connecting all those wires. This would be the LED. And here we've got the 
510 uh, ohms uh, dropping resistor. The ground. Yeah, it's fastened tightly, tighter than ever grinder slices. Just to be sure that uh, those are connected together. And yes, um, the AC wires are connected to the winding. And again, put some fire to the wire. Expecting 9 volts AC on those two. Correct. And expecting DC. If I remember correctly, not all those uh, interconnected pin on the pins on the DIN sockets uh, were actually connected with each other, but here we can see that it's actually 5 volts. So, the voltages are correct on this power supply. It's time to put it together mechanically. Got a bunch of screws and washers and uh, spacers. Spacer, screw board, spacer, this is going to be a little bit uh, difficult, but I think I'm going to make it. Oh, come on, for crying out loud. Maybe I should just put them on the standoffs. Uh, 
and try to screw this thing in without screwing this thing up. like grass threading on uh, on this but Now it's gonna be good. wires in oh, I think I will need to cut this down just a teeny tiny bit In the end I will glue this uh, cover together with the enclosure. Oh and let's look if the LED is also working. Yeah. There we have it. Thing of beauty. Joy forever.
So that would be the cute little power supply restoration project for the Commodore 64 I've got right here next to the desk. I will poke around on the C64. <laughs> And when uh, when my new friend Laptit arrives, I'll make a little episode um, about uh, the 64. That would be it. Thanks for, for watching. Stay determined and carry on.